Okay, so today we'll start on our backs, just lying down flat, but you know you can always bring soles of the feet to the mat with the legs bent. But if it's okay to bring the legs out in front of you, do that. Lift the chest, get the shoulder blades underneath you, close the eyes, start to take a deep breath in through the nose, back out through the nose. Long breath comes in through the nose and slowly back out. This time, breathe in through the nose. See if you can make any more space in the body without moving, just with the breath. And exhale back out through the nose. Keep going a couple more times on your own. Feeling the shift that's already starting to happen. And you'll blink open the eyes, reach the arms overhead, get really long on your mat, just coming into a stretch. And we'll hug the right knee in toward the chest. So left leg can stay extended out in front of you, but if you're feeling any lower back stuff, you can certainly bring the sole of the left foot onto the mat. Then extend that right leg up. You can grab onto the back of the right thigh. And we're starting to get into the backside of the right leg. So maybe you have a little bend in the leg if you're tight in the hamstrings or the calf, or maybe you're going for a straighter leg. Heel goes up, toes come down toward the face. And then keep some activity in the left leg. I know it's laying down on the mat, but see if you can press out through that heel too. Then you'll start to press the belly of the hamstring into the hands and the hands back into the hamstring. You'll feel the core start to engage. Lift the head and the shoulder blades away from the mat. You're still hanging onto the back of the thigh. This left foot, you can hover it away from the mat or you can leave it rested. It's a little harder if you keep it hovered and it's not going very high. And then reach the arms all the way up. So you're lifting the shoulder blades away from the mat. Interlace the fingers, all of them except for the index fingers. So you're pointing with the fingers interlaced. And then point outside of the right hip. So you're trying to keep those shoulder blades lifted. And then from here, just the right leg moves. Bring the right leg down to meet the left leg. And then inhale, bring it back up. Exhale, lower it. Inhale, back up. Exhale, lower, inhale, back up. So one more, and you'll notice as you press out through that left heel, you keep the muscles in the left leg engaged and it gives you a little bit of support as you're doing this. And then you'll set that left foot back down onto the mat, hug the right knee back in toward the chest, rest the head on the mat. And we'll switch sides. Left knee comes in toward the chest, right leg's feeling really long. So press out through that right heel and big toe mound of the foot. And then extend that left leg up. Just hang onto the back of the thigh and find where the stretch is here. A lot of different levers, the bend in the, the knee makes a big difference especially if you're tight, maybe the heel goes up, toes come down. You could even bring the leg in closer to you and you'll start feeling a deeper sensation there, but you're going for a nice therapeutic opening. Nothing that feels like you're straining, especially at the beginning. We take our time getting into the body, warming things up. And then start to press the thigh into the hands, the hands back into the thigh. Use that to lift the chest and fire up the core. Maybe the right heel hovers away from the mat. Reach the arms all the way up. Interlace the fingers except for the index fingers. Point way outside of the left hip. See if you can get the shoulders up a little bit higher. And then lower the left heel down to meet the right heel. And lift it back up. And we're going slow and controlled. Exhale as you lower. Inhale, reach it back up. Exhale as you lower. Inhale, slowly back up. Last one, exhale, lower. Inhale, back up. 
Hug that left knee in toward the chest, rest the right foot, the head on the mat. And then we'll bring both knees in toward the chest. You can rock side to side a little bit. Come up to seated, either rock up, use the hands as you roll over to one side, whatever's more comfortable and gives you more energy. And then sitting up nice and tall, you'll bring the back of the right hand to the top of the left thigh and just take a gentle twist. So not as deep as you can go, just find a little twist as you sit up nice and tall. And then slowly start to switch sides, look forward, unwind, back of the left hand to the right thigh. Fingertips back behind you are kind of nice on the mat because it'll help you sit up a little bit taller and not put too much weight into that right hand. So your core's fired up here. You have a little bit more heat. So see if you can use that to feel some support on the lower back. Then slowly unwind, coming back forward. We'll shift forward onto hands and knees, making our way to tabletop, all fours. And let's turn the hands around. So you can keep the fingertips pointing forward. You can turn the hands to the sides of the mat, or you can turn them all the way around so that the fingertips point to the knees. Shoulder stack over the heels of the hands. So whichever one is giving you a nice opening across the wrists and the forearms. On an inhale, reach the heart forward. On the exhale, round the whole spine, chin toward the chest. Keep going, inhaling forward. Exhaling round. And as you're doing this, make sure that the fingers are spread and you're pressing evenly into the hands and that you're using the whole spine. So sometimes we forget about the lower back, but really we wanna initiate all of this movement from the hips. So you can start with the hips first in your next cycle, going both directions. The next time you round the spine, stay there. Turn the hands back around if you adjusted the fingertips in a different direction. And then walk the hands way forward, like downward facing dog, but keep the hips over the knees. So the hips wanna shift back or forward. You can even just take a peek and make sure they're right over the knees. And that's how far you need to go with the hands. Let the forehead come down to the mat. So getting a deeper opening across the chest, the shoulders, upper back. So this is puppy dog. So it feels like downward facing dog with the knees down on the mat, but definitely more sensation across the upper body. Then you'll start to lift the head looking forward, walk the hands back a little bit, especially if they're off the mat, and then shift forward till you can stack the shoulders over the wrist. Knees are still down on the mat. Lift the lower belly, reach the heart forward. So that takes the rounding out of the back and nice, now you have a nice long spine. Bend the elbows halfway, just point them straight back, coming into Chaturanga with the knees down, and then lift yourself back up to where you started. On the next exhale, point the elbows straight back and you should feel the arms graze the, in, the sides of the torso. Come back up on the inhale, this time a little different. Lower down halfway chaturanga, keep the knees down or tuck the toes, lift the knees, chaturanga. So shoulders are wide across the back, collarbones are wide. And then lower yourself all the way down. We're all lying down onto our stomach tops of the feet to the mat, hands walk back a little bit. So the fingertips are in line with the center of the chest. Come up for Cobra. Exhale, release two more of those. Inhale up Cobra. Exhale, release last one. Inhaling up. Exhale, release, shift back onto hands and knees, coming back to tabletop, bring the big toes together, knees apart, child's pose. So sitting the hips back, walking the hands forward, bringing, those, the, bringing the forehead down to the mat. And moving the head side to side is kind of nice. It's really soothing, especially with that pressure point 
uh, touching the mat at the same time. So you can play with that. It'll help you release the neck a little bit. You're still with your Ujjayi breath here. And you'll find stillness in your child's pose, Balasana. And we'll transition to downward facing dog. So start to press down into the hands, lift the forearms away from the mat, look forward at the hands, shift forward, tuck the toes, lift the hips up and back. First downward facing dog. Maybe that means pedaling out the feet or adding some movement. Let the heels descend down toward the mat as much as they want. So you're listening to the backsides of the legs for that. You're also listening to the spine. So we're trying to get as much length as we can in the spine. So you hug the belly in, hug the lowest front ribs in, let the head and the neck go, and then see if you can push the hips up and back more with the hands and the inner arms. And then you'll lift the right leg up and back. Step the right foot through up between the hands, coming into a runner's lunge. So we're trying to stack this right knee over the right ankle, or you could be behind it. We just don't want to be ahead of the knee, ahead of the ankle. Good. And then from here, keep reaching the heart forward, stretch that left heel back. You're welcome to use blocks underneath the hands. That always makes things a little bit more comfortable, especially for the first few lunges. And we'll start to straighten the front leg. So you're staying high on the ball of the back foot. You're straightening the front leg and folding over the front leg. So where the hands are makes a big difference. If you walk the hands back underneath the shoulders, the stretch in the backside of the right leg becomes a little less intense. The farther you walk the hands forward, the more this becomes intense. So know that that's how you adjust this pose for yourself to be right where you need to be. So I am keeping my hands right underneath my shoulders, letting my head and my neck go. And feeling a really nice opening in the backside of the right leg. Then you'll start to shift forward to a lunge, left hand down on the mat, or you could come up onto fingertips or hand on a block. Right arm reaches up, coming into a twist. So we're trying to stack the right arm over the left arm and wrap that, get that right side rib cage on top of the left side rib cage, but keep that left leg strong so you're still pressing out through that left heel. Right hand comes back down to the mat, step back to downward facing dog. Left leg reaches up and back. Step that left foot through up between the hands, runner's lunge. Fingertips, blocks, feet, hip width distance apart. Start to stretch the heart forward as you reach that right heel back. And we'll start to straighten the front leg. You decide where the hands go underneath the shoulders, more forward. Are they good right where they are? Inhale forward to your lunge, right hand underneath the right shoulder, or maybe on fingertips or a block, left arm reaches up, open up across the chest, keep pressing that right heel back, keeping the right hip next to the left hip. So the right hip doesn't drop. Left hand comes back down to the mat. Step back to downward facing dog. Take a couple of breaths here, feeling the body become a little bit more even. 
And then bend the knees, look forward, step or walk the feet forward up between the hands. Inhaling up halfway, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, reach the arms out wide to the side, come all the way up to standing. Hands come together at the very top and down in front of the heart. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, forward fold all the way down. Inhaling up halfway. Exhale, bend the knees, bring the hands to the mat, step back to plank pose, lower down halfway chaturanga, knees are up or down, cobra or up dog, whichever one you feel ready for. Exhale back, downward facing dog. Bend the knees, look forward to the top of the mat, step, hop, bring the feet forward up between the hands. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold. All the way up on the inhale. Hands come together at the top, down in front of the heart. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold. Inhaling up halfway. Exhale, hands down to the mat. Step back to plank pose. Lower down halfway chaturanga. Cobra or up dog. Back to downward facing dog. And then make sure you can't see the heels. You want to hide them behind the balls of the feet. And for some of us, it feels like we're kicking the heels out a little bit. See if you can get them a little closer to the mat. Then bend the knees, look forward, step, walk, hop, feet up between the hands. Be gentle. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach the arms all the way up. Bring the hands together at the top and down in front of the heart. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, hands come down to the mat, step back to plank pose. Take a vinyasa, lowering down halfway. Inhaling up for your back bend and exhaling back to downward facing dog. A few breaths in your downward facing dog. See if you can get the arms and the legs a little bit longer and a little bit more length in the spine. Inhale the right leg up and back. Step the right foot forward up between the hands, setting up for warrior two. So spin that left heel down flat, windmill the arms up, Virabhadrasana two. So as you drive down through that right heel, you're also bringing the knee more toward the pinky toe side of the foot. And the outer edge of the back foot is sealed onto the mat. So you might feel a lift of the inner edge of the back foot. And then as you get the feet down, you start to feel the muscles in the legs heat up. So we definitely want to feel the, we definitely feel the quad in the front leg, but we want to feel the hamstring underneath. So that requires, it's almost like you're isometrically pulling the right heel back a little bit. So without moving it. Chest is opening out to the side, even though you're looking at over the right fingertips. And in the core, there's a lifting of the pubic bone and a lengthening of the tail. Bring the right forearm to the right thigh. Reach that left arm up and over, coming into extended side angle, Parjava Konasana. So keeping that right knee stacked over the right ankle, or maybe it's behind the ankle, that's fine too. That knee is still going more toward the pinky toe side of the foot, and you're still sealed with that 
outer edge of the left foot. And that's what helps you reach forward with the left arm and start to revolve the chest open or up. Look down at the mat. Start to bring the hands down to the mat. You're gonna come onto the ball of the back foot. Widen the feet a little bit so they're hip width distance apart. Left hand underneath the left shoulder, right arm reaches up. So we're back in that twist with the lunge. Keep the left leg strong. So you should feel that outer left hip supporting you as you stretch the left heel back. The right hand comes back down to the mat. Step back to plank pose. If you want a vinyasa, take it. Skip any of them and go straight to downward facing dog. Left leg reaches up and back. Step the left foot through, up between the hands, right heel down flat. Take your time, warrior two. Drive down through that front heel, outer edge of the back foot. See if you can feel all the muscles in the legs work. So not just that left quad, but the muscles underneath the leg, the hamstring, the glute, the calf and then drive down through the back leg. Sometimes it helps to think about squeezing the feet together a little bit, and that might bring a little bit more uh, cohesiveness into the legs. And then as you lengthen the hips down toward the mat, you're lifting the chest away from the mat, spreading the arms out wide. So as you reach back with that right arm, you should feel an opening of the right side chest, but keep the gaze forward if you can. Left forearm, left thigh, reach the right arm up and over, extended side angle. So legs are the same. You could put more weight into the left leg, but try to keep it even. So keep some weight in that back leg. And then as you open up the chest, see if you can get a little bit more length from the left hip to the left underarm. We want to keep that long. So the left hip has to go back a little bit, and then you'll feel some length go forward on the side of the torso on the left side as you open the chest up. Look down toward the mat, bring the hands to the mat as you come onto the ball of the back foot, separate the feet a little bit so your hip width distance with the feet, right hand down, left arm up, find that twist keep the right leg active. So hug that outer right hip in toward the midline as you stretch the right heel back. And if that left knee is going out to the side or the toes are going out to the side, that's definitely a cue to bring the feet wider apart. So you'll move the left foot out to the left. Left hand comes back down to the mat, step back to plank pose, any way you want, back to downward facing dog. Right leg goes up and back. Step the right foot forward up between the hands, warrior two. Right forearm, right thigh, extended side angle pose. If you're feeling pretty open in the hip and you want to bring that hand down outside the foot or on a block, you're welcome to. If you're good with the forearm to the thigh, leave it there. Look down at the mat, bring the hands down to the mat, come onto the ball of the back foot, widen the feet a little bit. Left hand underneath the left shoulder, right arm reaches up. So you're back in that twist. Fire up that left leg and the outer left hip. 
So you can stay right here. We're coming back to this pose. You can also play with where we're going. We're taking a modified version of side plank. And if it's too much, just come back to this and we'll all meet up here. So you'll come onto the outer edge of the left foot, looking down at the left hand, stretch that right leg back behind you and you're coming into side plank, but keep the right foot lifted. Reach the right arm up and over the ear, right foot still lifted. And then from here, elbow to knee, right elbow, right knee. So play with that. That left leg has to be strong and then stretch it away from you. Two more of those maybe. So getting into the obliques, last one. And this time, step that right foot forward, coming back to that side or to that twisted lunge. So right foot's forward, right arm reaches up. Now everyone bring that right hand down and that left knee down. And up to you. So I know there's a couple of foot issues in, in class today. Though the back toes can be tucked or untucked. So whichever one feels better, do that. And for everyone else that may be dealing with a foot injury later on in life. All right. So bring the hands up to that front thigh, push the thigh away from you and reach the arms all the way up. So this should feel like a really nice stretch at this point in the sequence. Bring the hands together and in front of the heart. So here you're pressing into the hands, you're keeping the chest open, open the chest to the right and hook this right elbow outside of the thigh. So we're in a twist, but that back knee is down. If you haven't already, tuck the back toes. Stay here, or maybe you lift that back knee coming into a more active version of the twist. Look down at the right foot. That left foot is stepping forward to meet the right foot. You'll end up in twisted chair. So step the left foot forward, come back into your twisted chair, then reach the arms forward, come all the way up to standing, hands come together down in front of the heart. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, forward fold all the way back down. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, hands down to the mat, bend the knees, back to plank pose. You choose how you wanna to get to downward facing dog. Just follow your breath. Try not to rush if you're doing a vinyasa. Left leg goes up and back. Step that left foot forward up between the hands, warrior two. Left forearm, left thigh, unless you're taking a deeper version, right arm reaches all the way up and over. Look down at the mat, hands to the mat, come onto the ball of the back foot, widen the feet a little bit, so move that left foot out to the left, right hand down, left arm up. So right toes and right hand are in line. Stay here or look down at the right hand, roll onto the outer edge of the right foot, side plank with the feet separated. So that left foot is lifted about hip height, Left arm reaches up and over, elbow to knee. So you feel how strong the right side of the body has to be to be able to support your balance inside plank. Two more. On the third, you hold that one and the left foot steps forward back to that twisted lunge. We'll all reach the left arm up. Left hand comes down to the mat. Right knee comes down to the mat. You can walk the hands up to the front thigh, push the chest away from you, reach the arms all the way up. Hands come together, down in front of the heart, open the chest to the left and start to lean forward, lightly hook the elbow outside of the thigh. So feel the twist here and get your spine lined up with the twist, leaning back a little bit. Then looking down at the left foot, Tuck the back toes, lift the back knee. 
So in a deeper variation of the twist, you'll start to step that right foot forward, transition to twisted chair. So be light, take your time with the transition, come into your twisted chair. Then reach the arms forward, Utkatasana. Press all the way up to standing, hands come together, down in front of the heart. Inhale, circle the arms up. Exhale, forward fold all the way back down. Inhaling up halfway. Exhale, hands down. Step back to plank pose, vinyasa or skip it. We'll meet back in Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Couple breaths here. Right leg goes up and back. Step that right foot through, warrior two. Side angle pose. Left arm reaches up and over. Hands down to the mat. Come onto the ball of the back foot. Move the right foot out to the right a little bit. Left hand underneath the left shoulder. Right arm reaches up. Stay here or side plank. Look down at the left hand, roll onto the outer edge of the left foot. Stretch that right leg back. Reach the right arm up and over. Elbow to knee maybe. Do it three times or maybe you just do it once and you hold it. Third time we hold it. Right foot steps forward, right arm reaches up. We're all together. Right hand comes down to the mat. Left knee comes down to the mat. Reach the arms all the way up, low lunge. Hands together, down in front of the heart. Open the chest to the right. Hook the elbow outside of the thigh. Tuck the back toes if you haven't already. Maybe you start to lift that back knee up. Start to look forward at the right foot. Step that left foot forward, twisted chair. Reach the arms forward, regular chair. Look down at the feet. Start to shift the weight over to the left foot. Cross the right ankle on top of the left thigh. You can bring the hands together in front of the heart. So we're going for a hip opening here on that right side, but that left hip wants to swing way out to the left. So keep that control of the outer left hip to keep it right behind the knee. Bring the left hand to the outer right knee. That's the bent leg. And then come up to standing, hanging onto that right knee and reaching the right arm back. So you're in a standing twist. And then notice if that right hip is lifting up way higher than the left hip. So think about your sit bones, get those level. And then maybe you could stay right here or maybe you reach the left arm forward. Maybe you reach the right leg forward and you're standing as tall as you can. That left thigh goes back, lift the chest. Then reach the arms all the way up, facing forward. Step the feet side by side. Exhale, forward fold all the way down. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, hands to the mat, step back to plank pose, down dog, any way you wanna get there. Left leg reaches up and back, step it through, warrior two. Extended side angle pose, Parjva Konasana. Hands start to come down to the mat. You're on the ball of the right foot. Scoot that left foot out to the left. Right hand down, left arm up. Find the twist. Keep that right leg active, no matter where you're going here. Start to look down at the right hand. Maybe you stay here or maybe you roll onto the outer edge of the right foot, stretch that left leg back, reach the left arm up and over. Maybe knee to elbow once, twice, three times. Hold on the third or whatever your last one is. 
step that left foot forward, reach the left arm up, bring that left hand back down, lower the back knee. We're all together. Reach the arms all the way up. Hands come together down in front of the heart, open the chest to the left, start to lean forward, hook the elbow. So find your twist in the upper body here first, before we start getting into the legs. Look down at the left foot, tuck the back toes, lift the back knee, stay here for a breath. And then when you feel ready, step the right foot forward to meet the left foot. <clears throat> Twisted chair. Come forward to chair, keep those legs bent. Then look down at the feet, shift the weight over to the right foot, left ankle, right thigh. Hands can come together in front of the heart. And then sit back, open up that left hip. It should feel pretty good. Keep control of the right hip and make sure that left foot's active. It's like you're standing on it. Right hand to the left knee, the bent leg, and then come up to standing, reach that left arm back behind you. So left arm reaches back as you open up across the chest. Maybe the right arm reaches forward. So you need to keep control of the sole of the left foot so that the leg's not just hanging out in space. You can keep the leg bent, or if you want more, extend the left leg forward and stand as tall as you can. Right thigh goes back. Then reach the arms forward and up. Keep the left leg lifted and step the feet side by side. Exhale, forward fold all the way down over the legs. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, hands to the mat, step back to plank, maybe a vinyasa, maybe you skip it. All right, right leg reaches up and back. Warrior two, step the right foot forward, left heel down, take your time. Side angle pose. Extended side angle, sorry. We're reaching the left arm up and over. And then bring the left hand down to the mat. Come onto the ball of the back foot. Separate the feet a little bit. Left hand underneath the left shoulder. Reach the right arm up. Stay here or side plank. Look down at the left hand. Stretch that right leg back, right arm reaches up and over. Elbow to knee, just do it once and hold it. Step the right foot forward, back to that twisted lunge. Right hand comes down to the mat, everyone. Set that back knee down, reach the arms up, low lunge. Hands come together in front of the heart. Open the chest to the right, start to hook the elbow outside of the thigh. Even here, that left hip's already working, even though the knee's down. Then toes are tucked, lift the back knee. You're in a twisted lunge, that's more active. And then look down at the right foot, step the left foot forward, twisted chair. Come forward to chair. Look down at the feet, start to shift the weight over to the left foot, right ankle, left thigh, sit back, standing pigeon, bring the hands together right in front of the heart. So from here, you can do what we did before, left hand, right knee, or left hand, outer right foot. You're coming up to standing, reaching that right arm back. So either the hands on the foot and the legs extended, doesn't have to be all the way straight, or the hands on the knee and the leg is bent. And you can start with one and switch to the other if you want. Reach the arms forward and up, extend that right leg forward if you haven't already, and set the feet side by side, forward fold all the way down. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, hands down to the mat, step back to plank. You choose how you want to get there, down dog.
Other side, left leg reaches up and back. Step the left foot forward, warrior two. Extended side angle. Hands to the mat, right hand underneath the right shoulder. Come onto the ball, of the back foot, separate the feet, create some distance, moving the left foot over to the left, left arm reaches up, find that twist without the right hip dropping. Look down at the right hand, stay here or roll onto the outer edge of the right foot, find side plank with the left foot lifted, left arm reaching up and over just one time. And we're holding elbow to knee. Step that left foot forward, back to the twisted lunge. Left hand comes down to the mat, everyone. Set that back knee down, reach the arms up. Hands come together, down in front of the heart. Twist to the left, hook the elbow. Get long in the spine so you can lift the chest here. Fire up the legs, look down at the left foot. Maybe that back knee lifts so you can step the right foot forward coming into your twisted chair. Forward to chair, reach the arms up. Look down at the feet. This time we transition the weight over to the right foot, left ankle, right thigh, hands can come together in front of the heart. Just feel that hip opening. And here is where you decide right hand, left knee or right hand, outer left foot. You're coming up to standing in that twist. So that left leg goes forward with a bent leg or straighter <laughs> left arm reaches back. Stand as tall as you can. That right thigh goes back. You'll start to bring the chest forward, reaching the arms up, extend that left leg out in front of you, then step the feet side by side, exhale forward fold all the way down over the legs. And let's take Padahastasana. So slide the hands underneath the feet, keeping the feet hip width distance apart. You can bend the, the legs as much as you need to, to, to make this happen. And then you can start to use the, if the toes reach, you want them up on the wrists and you can start to give yourself a massage with the toes. So you press the toes into the wrists and it's a really nice way to open them up. And then take the hands out from underneath the feet. You're just back in a regular forward fold. Inhale up halfway, Ardha Uttanasana. And then exhale, plant the hands, bend the knees, step back to plank pose. Last vinyasa if you want it. We'll meet back in downward facing dog. From downward facing dog, take another inhale. Exhale out of the mouth. Take child's pose. Big toes together, knees apart, bring the forehead down. You can keep the arms out in front of you or you can bring them back behind you with the backs of the hands resting on the mat outside of the feet. Then you'll start to bring yourself back up, come to seated on the mat, bring the feet over to one side, scoot yourself forward. We're setting up for bridge pose. So you'll come down onto your back, walk the feet in, rest the head on the mat, pressing down into the mat, lift the hips up, maybe the fingers interlace underneath you. You can always grab the outer edges of the mat like you're gonna rip it apart. What's nice about that option, if interlacing the fingers doesn't work, is it gets the same action in the arms. So you press down into the arms to lift and spread the chest. 
you're still digging into the feet, the heels, like you're trying to slide them back a little bit. till you feel the hamstrings engage and then you lengthen the thigh bones away from you. And slowly release, bring the hips back down to the mat, rest here. And we'll come back up. So we're doing two more rounds of back bends. Stick with bridge for all three. If you want something deeper and you're ready for that, you're welcome to take Urva Dhanurasana, upward facing bow. Wherever you are, find the strength in the legs lengthen the front side of the body, but also the back side of the body. So the tail goes up between the knees. Slowly release, start to bring the hips back down to the mat. Let them be heavy. Third and final round. So feet are probably right where they need to be, hip width distance apart, toes pointing forward. As you press into the feet, make sure you're using the inner edge and outer edge of the feet. So you're not just rolling over to one side. And then lift the hips up, bridge pose with the fingers interlaced underneath you or hands back by the ears, come up onto the top of the head, plug the shoulders in using the hands and the feet at the same time, lifting up to a deeper back bend if you feel open for that. We didn't do a whole lot of it today, backbending, so it needs to be in your practice already. Chin to chest, if you're all the way up, slowly start to lower back down to the mat. Walk the feet out wide, let the knees come together to release the lower back. And you can bring the arms out to the sides. Cactus shape is kind of nice because it puts some weight on the shoulders. And then heel toe the feet back to hip width distance. You'll hug the knees in, but just go like halfway so you can cross the ankles, hands on the knees. So one foot's hooked over the other. And it's like you're trying to pull the knees apart, but you won't be able to go that far with the feet hooked. But what's nice is you'll feel a lot more space in the lower back with the legs like this. So the exact opposite of what we did um, with the back bend is hugging the knees into the chest, but that's a deep transition and one we could probably do, but it's not great for the spine. The spine needs a little bit more time to unwind. So we don't ever wanna go right there, right away too fast. Hook the feet the other way. And then set the left foot down onto the mat. You can bring the right knee in toward the chest. Left leg can extend out in front of you and you'll cross the right knee over the body. So coming into your spinal twist, right arm reaches outside the shoulder, up to you if it's extended or bent. Start to make your way back onto your back. Keep hugging the right knee in toward the chest. Bring the sole of the left foot onto the mat. Now bring the right foot to the mat. Left knee comes in. Right foot still on the mat. Now extend the right leg all the way out. Cross that left knee over the body. You need to scoot the hips over a little bit so that right hips underneath the left hip. And ideally we want the right foot, right hip and head all in line as we come into this twist. Mm -hmm. 
So you'll look over to your, over the right shoulder. So you're just turning the head the other way, roll onto your right side. So that right knee needs to come up to meet the left knee and you'll use the hands to press yourself up to seated. So for our hip opener, we'll come to Sukhasana, just an easy cross-legged seat. Doesn't matter which shin is in front. Sit up nice and tall. Now you can keep the hands back behind you and just work the knees down toward the mat. If you get enough of a hip opening here, that's totally fine. Or you can start to bring the hands forward in front of you and start to walk the hands forward until you feel like you're starting to get into the hips and then stay there. Close the eyes, come into the breath. We'll do a little bit longer of a hold today, def probably about a minute left. So plenty of time to allow the body to just take you the rest of the way. So we don't want to jam ourselves into this. And we'll start to walk the hands back in, coming back up to seated, bring the hands back behind you so you can switch the crossing of the legs, other shin in front, sitting up nice and tall, either lean back and just keep the spine straight or start to walk the hands forward and come into your hip opening a little deeper if there's space. plenty of time here. Just take yourself most of the way and let your body do the rest, body and breath. And slowly start to make your way back out, coming back to seated, bring the hands back behind you and extend the legs forward. You'll come up to seated with the legs out in front of you, toes pointing up, reach the arms all the way up and fold forward over the legs, Paschimottanasana. And you'll start to make your way back up seated and you choose, do you want to do a seated meditation to close your practice or lie all the way down onto your back and come into Shavasana? Either one's okay. Take the one that's calling to you and what would set you up for the rest of your day. So if you're taking Shavasana, lie back, close the eyes. 
get any last fidgeting out, get yourself comfortable so you can truly be still. And then same thing with the seated meditation. You're trying to find a posture that you can sustain with a nice long spine, pubic bone goes down toward the mat and the heart lifts up. Neck is long, shoulders draw down the back. And then we're here for a couple of minutes. You're in your seated meditation, stay there. If you're in Shavasana, start to move the hands and the feet a little bit. Stretch the arms overhead. Walk the feet in. And roll over onto your right side. Use the hands when you're ready to bring yourself up to an easy cross-legged seat coming into your meditation. Eyes closed, bring the gaze up between the eyebrows, third eye, sit up nice and tall. Bring the hands together in front of you, maintaining the lift of the chest, bow the head to honor and acknowledge your heart and spirit as well as everyone around you. Bring the head back up, blink open the eyes, namaste. Thanks for joining and sharing your practice. Hope you all have a wonderful day and I'll see you next week.